you know, every single morning I would wake up, I kind of started feeling a little bit more tired. But I just thought like, man, running a business, staying up late, kind of waking up early, it's probably just something with my sleep. So I had that throughout 2022. And then shortly after, let's say March, I started to experience just some like really strong lower lower back pain in my right side to the point to where in order for it to go away, I'd have to lay down like on the bed or on the floor. And then of course the massive fatigue started taking place. And then after the fatigue, I started having some other mysterious symptoms like some heart palpitations, vertigo, um, just a lot of brain fog. I was not really knowing what was going on. So then I started eating normal again, like just kind of leaning up on my diet, eating a little bit more of the carbs, having some pizza. I've been in your shoes. I've been through the panic. I've been through the, the craziness. I've been through the dark hole. You know, I'm still going through it. I'm still recovering. But I'm able to give you assurance um, by saying, listen, give it a try. The only thing that can come from this is for you to get better. How's it going, guys? Miguel here from CFS Recovery. In this video, we have Nate, who is a long COVID case, been dealing with long COVID for a while now. It's been quite the journey for you. You've been on the merry-go-round of testing and all that stuff, as many people have. Uh, it's great to see Nate on here. He's making strides in his recovery making lots of progress, still well on his way, but I wanted to bring him on here just to share some of his experience with you guys. And maybe that can relate to some of the stories. So Nate, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, for sure, Miguel. Appreciate you for having me on here. Always love to uh, share any kind of knowledge, tips, things that I've been through throughout my journey. But yeah, I'm 27 years old. I currently am in Pennsylvania. I've traveled throughout states, different countries throughout my 27 years on this planet earth is what we call it so far. And it's, it's been a journey, um, being, a, a full-time business owner, entrepreneur, uh, author, and just being involved in different things in my daily life. It's, it's been a blessing and I'm very grateful for the things that I've been able to achieve and accomplish thus far in my life and come from a very great family that is very loving of myself and my biggest thing in life, Miguel, that I always tell people is I just, I love helping people. You know, I love being an impact and making a difference in others' lives as much as I possibly can. Um, but that's just, I guess you can say a little summary uh, about me. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you sharing that, man. And just a fun fact before we jump into it, I have known Nate for years now and actually when I first got out of the hospital, about two or three months after I got out of the hospital and still feeling symptoms and adjustment periods, um, I actually linked up with Nate when I was just starting my video business and you know, he gave me an opportunity to come film a project. And I remember that day, I had so many symptoms, but you probably didn't see it on me because I was responding the best I could. But it's interesting to be where we are now where I can you know, try to help you out uh, when you helped me out when I was first starting my video business. So it's pretty epic. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. Like one of my favorite quotes is by Steve Jobs. You can never connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect the dots moving backwards. And looking back whenever we met those few years ago, it's mind blowing because I'm thinking, you know, we had breakfast in a cafe. I remember that. You, you were completely fine from what I thought. And knowing what I know now, I'm thinking, man, Miguel was going through the trenches at that very beginning stages when we met and I had no idea. I, I was completely fine. I was living my life, meeting clients and getting ready to do events. And then all of a sudden, you know, knowing what I know now that you were going through, it's just, it's, it's mind blowing, man. And I'm just, I'm grateful for like, you know, not, not to go too deep yet. I know we just starting the call, but like, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in God and spirituality. And I really feel like, you know, God puts certain individuals in your lives for a reason. And I feel like Miguel, you've been planted, you were planted as a seed early on in my life. And then you, you slowly begin to sprout. I, I thought I had a realization of, of why you were there, but I really didn't until just recently. I understand, wow, this is why Miguel was planted to be into my life, not just to, to help me, you know, that specific day with that event 
and 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 to spitball and to mastermind different business ideas, but it was for a, a ultimate greater and bigger purpose. What I know now, man. So I'm I'm grateful for you, brother. I really am. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I remember it was just like last week when when we linked up. I was in AP, but I was like, screw it. You know, this is an opportunity. So much better now. Totally different life I live, but you know, this, the, this call is about you and your story. So I want to ask you, you know, how did, how did all of this happen? You know, you, you first got COVID. It was, you know, sometime last January, which is about a year, just over a year and a half ago, January, 2022. But when did it all really hit you? And you went, oh man, this, this is pretty serious. I, I better do something about this. What was that like? Yeah. Yeah. So when I got COVID back in January of 2022, I I never thought that I was going to get it because COVID was already out for like two years, pretty much. And when I first got hit with it, I was down for a month. I was living in LA and I went to the ER right away to see what was going on. They said I had COVID and then started taking like a medication. But long story short, with COVID, I had that for about a month. So February, I pretty much got over it. And I guess you can say fast forward into those few months. I noticed, I didn't think too much of it at the time, Miguel, but you know, every single morning I would wake up, I kind of started feeling a little bit more tired. But I just thought like, man, running a business, staying up late, kind of waking up early, it's probably just something with my sleep. So I had that throughout 2022. And then shortly after, let's say March, I started to experience just some like really strong lower lower back pain in my right side to the point to where in order for it to go away, I'd have to lay down like on the bed or on the floor and for about 10 minutes and then it would go away. And I'll tell you, whenever I would fly to visit family over here in Pennsylvania, I had one episode of the back pain mm. happen whenever I was on the plane. And that ain't no one or two hour flight. That's a five hour flight from LA yeah. to over here in PA pretty much. So I literally had to ask the flight attendant. I'm like, excuse me, do you got, you got any like pain relief or Tylenol? And me, I'm kind of introverted. I don't like having to ask people for things, especially when it comes to like any certain pain relief. And she said, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get you some Tylenol. Gave me some Tylenol. Didn't really help. So I literally had to bear with the pain until I got off of the plane. And then I got in the vehicle. Of course, I'm not going to lay down on the on the <laughs> doggone airport floor. I mean, those things are dirty. So I uh, got in the car, drove, and went to the nearest, uh, I think it was like a Chick-fil-A, and then got something to eat because I was starving. And then I literally laid down on the grass for like 15 minutes until the pain went away. So finally. That's how bad it hurt, eh? Yeah, it, it hurt so bad, man, I'll tell you. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Cause that's actually, I, I forgot about it, but that's one of the first tips I had too. Really? Cause I'd be driving to work for like, I'd be in my car for an hour sitting in traffic and my lower back just killed. Uh, I thought it was from working out, but this was different. It's like, you know, that pain when you deadlift wrong and you strain your lower back, it was like that, but like internal, it was weird. But I remember that I was, I had that for months. Didn't know what was going on. It was one of the first signs before things went really down. So it's really interesting. That's why I didn't know you went through that. Like, huh? Yeah, yeah. literally. Because you think, man, it's it's working out, man. I got to stop working out or something for a little minute. I feel like I got to recover. But yeah, no, nah, that it, it was just so much pain. I, I never felt that much pain in my life. Yeah, I thought it was my it's adrenals like, shutting down because I'd research it. Of course, it's like your adrenals, you know under your rib cage in the back, you know, and I was like, that's where it hurts and around that area. And, uh, kind of freaked me out a little bit, but I just kept stretching it and it just kept coming back. So it was, yeah. Yeah. It's like nothing worked, yeah. you know, nothing, nothing worked, but yeah, then I, I had a couple of traumatic events I'd say in last August. Yeah. August of 2022 was a, whew, that was a big, uh, I guess you can say, trauma month. I was involved in a in an accident with my grandparents, and 
unfortunately, you know, grandfather, he fell asleep at the wheel and we hit a tractor and trailer, um, an 18 wheeler. I mean, one of the big trucks that you see on the road, luckily it wasn't head one. We were about two, maybe three seconds. If it would have happened before, it would have been head on, but we hit basically the gas side of the tractor and trailer and every, everybody was fine. I mean, the car was basically totaled, but everybody was fine. I was in the back seat, walked out of that completely normal. And then I was also in the process of moving from Los Angeles back to Pennsylvania here with the intention of going to New York city. And long story short, I had a moving company that I thought was legit. They had incredible five-star reviews online. And I'm telling you, hundreds. And I'm in the marketing industry, so I look at this stuff, right? So I'm over here thinking this is a reputable company. And lo and behold, the day of the move, this company comes out. They're international. Okay, they're foreigners. And again, I got love for everybody, so I don't really like to look at negatives or think like they might be trying to screw you but basically this moving company i was told it was going to be two grand to move everything from la to pa lo and behold two grand turns into ten thousand dollars within a matter of 30 minutes and i basically am just like shook because i was pretty tight financially already had everything laid out for the amount that I thought it was going to be. And when you basically have somebody come out to you and tell you, no, no, it's, it's, it's this price. Now it, it basically, it didn't double, it quadrupled in price. And that threw me for a tool. I got very emotional and I'm basically saying this because when they packed everything up, I was on Google looking at the company now that I knew that was moving me. And they had nothing but one-star reviews of people saying you were going to be lucky. And I mean lucky to ever see your belongings ever again in your life. Two, you might get other people's belongings instead of yourself. And Miguel, the first thing that struck me was like, dude, I got over 200 books that I've collected mm -hmm. ever since I've been 16, 17 years old. I don't want to lose those. So I'm over here running through my mind the worst of what's going to happen. And basically they packed everything and I was going to get on the road that same day, which I did. So I began my road trip and I was working my way all the way to Salt Lake city, the first day of Utah and back to the back pain. I have never had the worst back pain in my entire life until that day. And I found it very interesting because I had that traumatic event, which led to a lot of stress and I kid you not, man, I going across the desert, 130 degrees across Death Valley at the one point, I was like, dude, I, I can't, I can't do this. So I, I pulled off to like an urgent care, that thing was packed. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to bear with the pain. And I tried to find shade across the desert as much as I could charge in the Tesla. And I found this one shaded area, bro. It was so hot. Like I felt like I was in a sauna just laying down. Mm -hmm. I, I got like a towel from my trunk to lay down on because I didn't want to lay on that hot asphalt. It just, it wasn't working, man. I had that pain up until I got to Utah and I was bearing with it, man. And I finally got to my hotel. I said, Lord, just please make this pain go away. Fell asleep that night, woke up the next morning, pain was gone. So it was, it was a very eventful experience across country until I made it to PA. And then when I finally made it to Pennsylvania, I was good. I was good for a week, week and a half. And then after a week went by, I was watching some, some football. It was opening night. I still remember it was the Los Angeles Rams against the Buffalo Bills, uh, 2022 opening season. And I noticed randomly while I was watching football, I had a very interesting tingling sensation happen around my pelvic floor region, kind of around my perineum. And I thought it was very interesting. I never experienced anything like that. Thought it might happen for a day. Persisted for a few days. And then I said, hey, I'm going to go to an urgent care, see what's going on. 
uh, lo and behold, they couldn't really tell me much besides just saying, oh, it just seems like you strained something. You might need muscle relaxers. So that was kind of my whole start of, of when everything started happening. The first thing was the, the tingling sensation. And then, of course, the massive fatigue started taking place. And then after the fatigue, I started having some other mysterious symptoms like some heart palpitations, vertigo, just a lot of brain fog. I was not really knowing what was going on. So I went back to the urgent care and basically they ran an EMG. Um, I'm sorry, not an EMG, a uh, ECG or uh, what kind of scan is it? They hold to a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> one yeah. of those tests. Man, it was like one of those. It was like a heart scan test, you know, where they put those. It oh, might have been EPK. Or, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's the name of it. But they, they did one of those tests. And the two that did the test, the one was older and the other was a brand new student just out of college or out of nursing school or whatever. And they're over here saying like, man, I, I don't know the last time I ran one of these tests. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, that's, that's completely fine. They probably know what they're doing. So they ran this test on me. They're not the ones that tell me the results. They have somebody else that come in and tell me the result. And the person that came in and, you know, I, I'm really good with energy. I can feel things pretty well. And if something's a little off, right when this person walked in, man, her energy was like really down. Like it was some like not so good energy. And I was thinking, huh. And she asked me, she's like, Mr. Peterman. What, uh, have you used any, any kind of street drugs recently? I said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't use any street drugs. And she said, okay, basically, do you have anybody here with you today? And I said, yeah, my mom's outside. She said, all right, because if you didn't have anybody here, I was going to say I'd need to call an ambulance because this, this test is like really abnormal for your heart. And I said, oh my, okay. So basically they said, yeah, if, if, my, if I didn't have anybody there, they'd call an ambulance right away. Luckily, I did. So, you know, of course, in my mind, I'm, I'm over here thinking, man, there's something going on with my heart, you know? My mom's getting all emotional. So we run to the to the ER. Miguel, this is the first time of me being to the, to the ER. And basically, they run two of the same exact tests that I had done in the urgent care at the ER. And they said, everything's completely fine. And I said, I said, Doc, help me make sense of this. I was just at the urgent care and they told me everything was like not normal. Now you're telling me everything's normal and they're doing more extensive tests mm -hmm. like in the ER, of course. And I was like, help me make sense of this. I came here because I was in the urgent care. He said, well, yeah, it's because you went to an urgent care. They don't really know much. Oh. And I said, well, I'm not supposed to go to the ER first. I'm supposed to go to the urgent care first. And you're telling me they don't know what they're talking about. I said, that's not very assuring. Yeah, exactly. So now you're here like super confused and like probably more scared. Like you don't know who to trust at this point. Cause there was. Uh... Yeah. They run these x-rays. They, they be doing uh cat scans of, 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 of myself. And, and they said, everything's fine. Everything's normal. I said, man, it don't feel normal doc. What, what's going on? What, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help me make sense of this. And, but anyways, they sent me home and I thought, man, things are going to improve. You know, I got some hope because they said everything's fine. But again, you know, symptoms are still persisting. The symptom that really started to kind of scare me a little bit was the muscle twitching where basically I have fa facilitations all throughout my body. It's, it's not a one given area. It's in the feet. It's in the face. It's, it's everywhere in my body. And the reason I got very concerned is because you know, when you think of muscle twitching, you think of things like ALS, you think of things like potential MS or, or just serious illnesses and diseases. And for me, you know, I have ALS that is run in the family. My grandfather had it. My great grandfather had it. So of course you're, you know, you tend to control your conscious mind as much as you can, but sometimes at the end of the day, the thing that's really rolling your, your mind is your subconscious mind. So it's like, that's why our habits and our daily activities that we do are very important. Same with the people that we surround ourselves with every single day. So, you know, I start to think, man, I swear, I hope it's not nothing like that. So 
I basically, who do you call for something like that? You call a neurologist. So I call the neurologist up and they say, oh, we can't have you in for six months. And I'm thinking, man, six months? That's insane. Because I'm in a smaller town here in Pennsylvania. It's not really that big compared to like an LA or a New York. But anyways, I was able to expedite the process by explaining to them the situation. Got in a couple months earlier. And the neurologist, um, you know, basically ran all these different flicking, flicking your, you know, your limbs and running these different speech tests, vision yeah. tests. Lights in the eyes, hold your hands up, squeeze my hands, that sort of stuff. Right. I'm thinking, man, I feel like a test dummy right now. I just didn't feel, <laughs> didn't feel normal. You know, I'm, I'm telling him, hey, doc, my, my vision's blurry. He had me do an eye test. He's like, no, Nate, everything's fine. Like, you have 20 20. I'm thinking, I don't feel like I got 20 20 right now. So, uh, yeah, he had me do these tests. I went to go do blood tests. And, you know, he said about, he's like, yeah, it sounds like this this could be something like CFS. I don't know if you've heard of it. And I said, Doc, I don't know what the heck CFS is. He said, it's chronic fatigue syndrome. I said, man, is it just being tired? Because I'm more than being tired. He's like, no, 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 there's, there's more to it than that. And he just told me it took him about a year to recover. He had to adjust his diet. He didn't really exercise that much, really rested a ton. And he said, anyways, I'm going to refer you to a more advanced neurologist because I just really became a neurologist recently. So he referred me to an advanced neurologist in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania, which Hershey, I mean, you have people that come from all over the world to come to Hershey. You know, it's a really top medical clinic here in Pennsylvania. So I went to meet this other neurologist like several months later. And um, basically he did more advanced. Like you could tell he was a legit neurologist. Like he's been doing it for years. He was from China. Of course, I've been to China. So it's a lot of relatability just with one another. You know, he wasn't the most uh, casual, just wanting to talk. He was, let's get down to business. So he did more of those tests on me. And yeah, he said, hey, everything seems fine. I mean, it's up to you if you want to do like a genetic test. I did a genetic test. It was up to me to do that. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And uh, yeah, so I, I went through a bunch of, of this testing through neurologists. But again, I didn't really have much straight answers. I mean, they pretty much told me everything that I've already known. They couldn't really make sense of the muscle twitching. I mean, I did an EM EMG is the, the muscle test where they stick a needle in your back and they basically oh then the nerve conduction tests that kind of zap you here and there to see what happens yeah, yeah i remember doing that so, i mean that, that was crazy because i'm thinking man that my limbs are going like without control and I'm, they're just like flicking and it was it was quite a test but they told me hey we, we see the facilitations in there but we don't see it being something serious like it, it, it might be benign facilitation syndrome or whatever they call that. So yeah, man, I mean, I, I had all these tests, Miguel, went to the ER three times, urgent care three times, I tested for COVID so many times, I had like every blood test in the book from thyroids to liver tests to uh, autoimmunity tests, parasites, um, potential Lyme. I've had a Lyme test done three times. I've worked with three different naturopaths one of the best ones in the country. I've had uh, one of the top naturopaths in Los Angeles who works with celebrities and stuff, offer some some input, advice, supplements. I feel like I've tried every supplement in the book from the vitamins to the, to the organ capsules. I mean, even to this day, I probably got about 30 capsules. I mean, I have 30 supplements in my, in my cabinet right now. And, and, and you got the and, pharmacy in there. Yeah, right. It's, it's literally, yeah, like a complete pharmacy. And keep in mind, I've supplemented throughout my life anyways. You know, supplements wasn't something that was brand new. I mean, when people have things going on with health, you know, they always would normally ask me about it. Like, Nate, what should I do here? Because I always have a very strong um, intuition when it comes to my overall health. Like I'm a big big steak guy. I love and I believe in the carnivore diet majorly with the amount of benefits that come with it. And something I think that's very interesting on who I follow 
uh, Dr. Uh, Peterson, Jordan Peterson, I believe is, is his name. And he lives by the carnivore diet. And he had all of these issues, same with his daughter, for years, autoimmune issues that none of these doctors could figure out. And then he actually went on a straight up carnivore diet and mm-hmm. just cutting out all the crap of his diet to then later being basically miraculously cured of all the, of, of, of this illness, this autoimmunity. And I thought it was so interesting because I then tried that where for like three months, I cut everything out cold turkey to where I was just eating strictly meat, basically low carbs. And if it was a carb, it was like chickpea pasta, um, lentil pasta, beans, white uh, basamati rice. Like I was so picky for my diet for like three to four months. But then it got to the point, Miguel, where I didn't really see much of a change. And I did this diet because my one, you know, coach naturopath told me to do it. And I didn't see much of a change. The only change that I saw was I was losing weight because I wasn't getting many cards in it. And for me, I'm a six foot guy. Normally, I weigh about 155 to 160. And I got to the point to where I was 145, going down to 140 pounds. And being tall already and skinny, 155, 160 pounds, you're still a skinny dude. But when you go down to 145, 140, that's when you start thinking, like, well, why, why am I losing all this weight? I mean, I, I, I know why. It's probably because of this diet. So then I started eating normal again. Like just kind of leaning up on my diet, eating a little bit more of the carbs, having some pizza. Um, Because food's never really affected me like that to what my naturopath Mm -hmm. kind of was saying that it might be. And anyways, I I got back to eating normally, started to gain a little bit of the weight back. I'm still at that base, like 150 to 155. I haven't really been able to gain weight, but at the same time, I haven't been able to really work out as much either. But yeah, man, it's 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 been a it's been a journey, especially doing parasite cleanses, where you're not just taking supplements. Oh, the you know? yeah, the detoxes and all that, man, that just wipes you out. Even for a health person, I've done a few detoxes, but especially when I was dealing with this stuff, oh man, it's like for people who know what an adjustment period is, it's like adjustment period times five. It actually feels like you're crashing a little bit. It's brutal. It really does, man. Especially if you have to do enemas. Those those in the hospital, those aren't fun. (laughs) Yeah, literally. Coffee (laughs) enemas. I did that for a solid, uh, I'd say month and a half. And man, the stuff you see coming out of you. Listen, I'm, I'm a firm believer in holistic health. I strongly believe that doing an enema I think it is healthy for the body because what we accumulate throughout our years of what we eat, I mean, they all, they all say we have something in our body, like some kind of like parasitic. Uh, Unfortunately for some, you know, they establish very majorly big parasites that really impact the body. And it's a real thing. So I think, I think it is something that should be taken serious. Um, But enemas are not the most fun thing to do. At the end of the day, I mean, the fact of putting something up, you know, your rectum is, is not the most appealing um, to do. But when you're going through symptoms of this, of like long COVID, CFS, right, things like that, you will do whatever it takes to try to get your high tail back on track. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's not the prettiest but you'll do whatever it takes to, to get back to that point. Infrared saunas. I mean, dude, I bought a $700 infrared sauna here at home that I literally can lay in. I mean, it's again, it's a good investment because infrared saunas are proven to lower so many different long-term effects of people that have like dementia that could get Alzheimer's. So it actually lowers your effects of that. So I, I look at, I'm not... Like some people will get pissed because, oh, I invested all this money into supplements or these different alternatives like an acupuncture mat. You can't get pissed at that. You can't get mad because there are still many benefits that come from that. You just have to understand what it is that I'm going through um, 
it is something not that's wrong with you, but it's something that's internal within your brain that you just have to have a lot of patience um, with throughout the time. So I don't want to get too into that yet, Miguel. Maybe you want to kind of get into it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a powerful story, man. And I never really knew all the details of the whole move and, you know, getting stuck in the desert uh, with the back pain and then, you know, all stuff that went down with the moving company and then coming back here and or coming out to Pennsylvania and then going through that whole medical fiasco and all the things you tried. I remember we were chatting back and forth um, because you saw that I was helping people cover from CFS. And I was basically like, you know what, Nate, just do all your tests first just to make sure we clear everything off the table. But once you did all that stuff, um, you know, you decided to give re recovery jumpstart a shot and, you know, you, you came in, you learned a whole bunch of stuff, but what would, what would you say was the most helpful things for you to learn about in the program? Like we teach a lot of stuff, but what really stuck out for you and that helped you make sense of all the stuff that was happening in your body? Yeah. I mean, when you're going through so many of the unknown symptoms and by the way, again, grateful for Miguel because I posted on my Instagram story that I was going through some things because normally I'm pretty active on social media and you were one of the ones that reached out and said, Hey man, hope everything goes great. You know, praying for you, your recovery. Uh, if things don't check out with these medical specialists, hit me up, you know, let me know. I'll be here for you. And I didn't really know what you meant at the time, but I then reached out to you because it wasn't making any sense. And then that's when you said about, you know, the program CFS recovery. And at first I was thinking, I don't know what this is, but then, you know, you and I hopped on a call, like you said, and you educated me a little bit about what it was about. And I was like, man, at this point I'm all in, man, let's go. Like, let's not, let's go off to the races. So for me personally, one of the big things, I mean, there's several things, but one of the things that I've really been able to gain some understanding on is what's really happening throughout the body, mainly, aka the nervous system. And the way that you break it down, Miguel, is, is really intriguing because nobody has ever broken it down like that before, let alone nobody has really understood or, or has known what is going on with your nervous system, and your body. And a lot of people, they'll try to diagnose you and say, you have anxiety, you have depression, right? I, I even got told that I needed to go to a mental institution by some very close people of mine. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I found that very upsetting at first because, you know, people that are very close to you, you expect them to support you and, and they do support you, but at the same time, they just didn't quite understand it. So the fact that you broke everything down um, throughout this program and the video modules and it's not like they're long videos i mean these things are like a few minutes maybe 10 minutes long um i think is is really great because it goes to show exactly what's happening within the body and the fact that you were paired up with other individuals within this recovery program i think is brilliant because you're not just with an individual that is in the same state in the same country, you got individuals throughout the whole entire world that are in this program, whether it's Australia, whether it's over in Europe, shout out to Germany, shout out to England, shout out to, shout out to Scotland, um, Canada. I think it's, it's absolutely beautiful the amount of impact and the reach that CFS Recovery and yourself, Miguel, has been able to reach up until this point because it goes to show that People need answers, and there are so many, not hundreds, but thousands, maybe at this point millions. I saw a fun, interesting statistic recently that the number one chronic illness is chronic yeah. fatigue syndrome, and it is a not just a 100% increase. It is at an 11,000% increase over any other chronic illness there is out there in this world. So the fact that there's a program like CFS Recovery that is giving people solutions um, to the unknown and to the mystery side that they've been going through, not just for months, but man, you got people that have been going through this for, for years, if not decades, 
in this program and the fact that they've been able to see results of decades of constant work that they've been trying to just get through, but they're seeing results within sometimes as early as one to two months, if not earlier, uh, so others, it's a few months. Sometimes it takes a year, right? It's, it's, it's variant depending upon one's journey. And most importantly, the way that they have an outlook, right? The outlook, what, what we think about in our mind is very critical to this recovery journey. But anyways, I mean, I, I could keep going, Miguel. I could talk, talk your ear off all day, but what this program has done and what I've seen firsthand is absolutely incredible because it gives you assurance that nothing is really wrong with your body, but it's more of an internal brain nervous system thing that's going on. So it's, it's been remarkable. It really has me go. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate the amazing kind words, uh, you know, you've shared with us here today about the program and everything. And it's, it's why I'm so passionate about helping people. Cause you know, you know how tough your journey was and I know how tough my journey was. And to think that there's millions of people out there going through this right now, this very second who are in the dark, who were there where you were a year ago in terms of just mindset, like not knowing what's going on. It's almost like, you, you know, that frantic energy of do, trying to do everything you can to find out even an idea of what's going on. It seems like the more doctors we see, the more tests we do, it's like, we're just left more confused and then more confused. You get a little more hopeless of like, wow, recovery seems way further down the line than it was a month ago or three weeks ago when you're getting no, no, or, you know, the doctors sometimes say, congrats, Nate, completely fine. There's nothing wrong with you. But that's like the last thing we want to hear. We actually want to hear what's wrong, right? So it's it's really interesting to to see that. But, um, you know, your your progress has been quite steady, you know, you've had the mind shifts, you've really picked up on a lot of the, the the topics and even just understanding what's going on. You've really soaked it all in. What would you say is different now, let's say this September versus last September in terms of, you know, what you're able to do and even just, you know, your anxiety levels overall about your health. Cause you know, you put in tons and tons of work and I always tell people, you know, we provide the tools, we provide the information present it to you guys, but ultimately it's up to the individual to uh, do what they can with it. And you really put in a lot of hard work. And so I'm really proud of you, but what would you say is different now than 12 months ago in terms of your health and your just overall situation? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, this time last September, I was still going to the ERs, you know, and going to these ERs, you start to have a lot of panic, a lot of anxiety that builds up. Keep in mind, I, I'm not one to really believe too much when it comes to anxiety and, and, and depression. I, obviously, it's, it's a real thing, of course. But I believe if you really live a very great, happy, fulfilling lifestyle, you're purpose-driven, you take care of yourself, you're with a great network of people, I believe a lot of things can be cured. I really do. But this time last year, I was just really in, in panic mode, not knowing what was going on. And I feel like being in that panic mode, that drove a lot of, a lot more symptoms to become more prevalent in my life. And when you're, when you're scared of the unknown of what's, of what's really not happening, then, like I said, you'll, you'll do whatever it takes. And I felt that a year ago, I just was, literally going to every single doctor that I could potentially get with just trying to find that answer, like you said, but when you're, when you're not told an answer, it, it really bogs you down and into like a dark, kind of like a black hole in a way. And especially when you have those that are supposedly supposed to be close to you, not really as close or supportive as what you think, but sometimes they're, they're critical of you and they think you're going mentally insane. It, that's another thing. But at the same time, for someone like myself, I mean, I've, I've always have had doubt in my life. And when I say I've always have, had doubt, I've always had doubters. I've always had people that have doubted me ever since back in high school. So it's like that was nothing new. I've always had a mentality. It's like, all right, if, if, you, don't, if you don't believe in it, just watch me. Watch what I'll do. 
And looking at where I'm at now, I'm not panicking, right? If, if I have some muscles that twitch, I have muscles that twitch. I understand I am still recovering. I, I know it's not going to be an overnight process. It's not. And if somebody thinks it is going to be an overnight process to get into any kind of program, like, listen, it ain't no overnight process. You know, my journey compared to Sally's journey, compared to John's journey. Listen, John might recover in three my, months. It might take me nine months, right? It, it might take me a year and a half. But I think it really comes down to how are you living your lifestyle? That's the most important thing. What are you, what are you doing every single day to reprogram your mind? Uh, that's very important. So for me, it's like getting out of panic mode, being okay with being a little bit tired. I mean, listen, I'm tired right now. I mean, I, I got a little bags under my eyes. I'm a little fatigued, but sometimes I'll slur my words a little bit. But it's, it's not necessarily getting upset to the point, man, I just slurred my words. There goes my day. My whole day is shot. I'm going to have a negative mentality about it. Heck no. I'm just going to stay on the course. If I slur my words, I slur my words. If my muscles twitch, my muscles twitch. If I feel a little bit tired, I feel a little bit more tired. It's understanding when to take the necessary rest. Something else I didn't really know what to do this time last year, um, last year I felt so fatigued. I was having emotional breakdowns, crying random times. Um, I just felt so drained. I mean, there was times where I just didn't even feel like getting up during the day. Fortunately, I will say I haven't been to the point to where I've been bed bound throughout the whole entire day. I don't know what that's like, but I do know what it's like to just have massive fatigue and, and basically wanting to push yourself. But I realized if you continue to want to push yourself to that extent, it can kind of harm you a little bit too, because you're not listening to your body. You're just literally, if, if you work out nonstop one day, the next day you feel probably not the best. Are you going to do the same exact thing what you did the other day? Probably not. It's not smart to do that. So I've realized, Nate, listen to your body. Practice more gratitude, become more patient, understand, again, your journey is not John's journey. Your journey was not Miguel's journey, all right? And understand that you will get better. It's just a matter of time and patience and just having a positive outlook. So that's what I'd say for me, Miguel, has been my ultimate one-year outlook on looking back and saying, what have I learned? What have I grasped? I'd say that's been the the main pointers. Oh yeah. And that's powerful, man. And that ties into so many other things too. I, I think what I see in a lot of people, especially once they have a better understanding of what's going on, um, of the nervous system, where the symptoms come from, why they're even there in the first place, why the body's in survival mode. It's almost like you don't feel like you're walking on eggshells. you're as fragile, you know, whereas before it's like, who knows what could happen? Who my body could do whatever. It's like, there's zero trust back in the day. Whereas now it's like, okay, there's some kind of roadmap here. I kind of know what to do in these situations. So yeah, man, you're, you've been doing great on your journey. You're well on your way. There's still some work to do, but uh, you know, what I see in you, even just the mind shifts, and the way you're able to perceive the flare-ups and things like that, that's really the foundation of, of, of recalibrating the nervous system. So like you said, it's only a matter of time, only a matter of time. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. So, you know, really appreciate your time here today. What would you tell people? And you've shared so many golden nuggets, like this entire call is like one giant golden nugget, but what would you tell people who are in your shoes? They were in your shoes last year 
you know, when you were hopeless, panicky, um, and maybe this is one of the first videos they're seeing about chronic fatigue syndrome or they have long COVID, what kind of words of inspiration or encouragement would you tell them? You know, I'd say, listen, if you're going through something right now, if you're going through these symptoms, listen, if you got heart palpitations, I mean, that your heart's like your life center right there. That's scary if you got some, some of these just insane, mysterious symptoms. If, if you're not getting answers, um, you need to get to a point within yourself, within your mind, to really decide that you want to change. Because the thing that's holding you back from actually changing, especially when you know that there is potentially something that can help you outside of the doctor, the medical specialist, right? But if you're looking at a, at a program and you already see all these testimonials and you're what? come on, you're looking at my testimonial right now. You're looking at my testimonial and I'm telling you this, I'm trying to give you assurance. I'm trying to help you, okay? Because obviously you haven't been able to help yourself quite to this point. So if you need to get over that hump, this is what you need. You need to get involved with other people that are going through what you're going through. Just the fact that you can have somebody to help support you. You don't, you don't just got Miguel. You got multiple coaches that are in your corner. So if you're going through something, heart palpitations, if you're going through just some of these crazy symptoms, you can actually talk to somebody about this. That doesn't just, and let me tell you, it's not that they understand and they're educated about this. They've had what you've had. They've had CFS, had long COVID. So these are people that have just read books and are saying, oh man, I want to do this. Kind of like somebody that's going to college to get a degree just because they're passionate or interested about it. No, they actually have went through it. They've been in your shoes. I've been in your shoes. I've been through the panic. I've been through the, the craziness. I've been through the dark hole. You know, I'm still going through it. I'm still recovering, but I'm able to give you assurance um, by saying, listen, give it a try. What, what, what's it going to hurt? If you've done all this stuff to this point, the only thing that can come from this is for you to get better. But like I said, you got to have really realistic expectations. And if you're going to get into like a program, like CFS recovery with other people, you can't expect to recover overnight because it ain't going to be like that. I'm a realist when it comes to this stuff. Recovery takes time. Do you really think somebody that's coming off of alcohol, that's an alcoholic, that they're going to do it within a day? Absolutely not. That's why they got Alcoholic Anonymous. Do you really think somebody that's addicted to smoking, that once they get off, they're going to be completely sober or, or better you think their lungs within a day are back to normal heck no i mean i'll tell you our, our organs can do a very miraculous thing with recovery but it takes time it takes patience so my main thing is if i were you and if i'm listening to this take the leap of faith do whatever it takes let me tell you financials i've been through it i've invested tens of thousands of dollars already into the medical industry without really getting any clear cut answers. But if financials, if for one second ever get in the way, listen guys, we're human beings. We can make anything work, make it happen. All right. Believe in it. You can do whatever it takes because if, if, if a financial thing, whatever holds somebody back from becoming better, you are absolutely kidding yourself. I mean, there are so many things that you can do to come up with financials, to, to, to make the money. I mean, there are so many things out there that you can truly do to get involved in a program like this. And I think, I think it's a very interesting thing because we live in a very high tech social media driven world where online is a very, it's, it's great. It's a great thing to look at things online. Unfortunately, you got people out there that like to spew a lot of negativity because they feel as if they have their own opinion. They feel as if they're experts, but you're not really an expert in something if you haven't actually, within this case, technically recovered. So if you haven't recovered from something, you're looking at it from kind of like the outside in and you're being a judgment, you're, you're giving a judgmental opinion of something that you don't really know. So 
I just think, listen, not just with CFS recovery, but with anything in life, make sure you really have a solid perspective of where it is that you want to go and make your decision based off of, hey, I want to get better. I want to recover. I'm ready to do whatever it takes because I was in your shoes, honey. I was in your shoes, brother. So now it's up to you. I can't decide for you. You got to decide. Other than that, that's, that's my two cents. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> that's amazing, man. Amazing. Appreciate, appreciate the, the kind words and glad you've been able to, you know, experience the recovery jumpstart. And now we we're coming out with other programs as well, like recovery Academy, which we haven't even majorly announced yet, but you know, that's, that's even that's an even more affordable program for people, for people who are struggling and who want to get the extra help. So we have these things in place. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. We're really out here to, to help people get better. So again, Nate, really appreciate your time. I can't wait to see your journey unfold even more. And for you guys watching this right now, this was absolute gold that Nate just shared with us over the past 45 minutes. So definitely watch this one back. I would watch this one back a few times, actually, because there's so many things he said that I'm sure you resonate with. And I think it's just an inspiring story to show what's possible and just to show you guys that there's people out there just like you who, who've been on the merry-go-round of doctors, visits and tests, seeing neurologists, specialists, doing all these different things, whatever it takes to get better, it not working and finally finding something that, that does work, right? So if you did get some value out of this video, comment down below. What was your biggest takeaway from this video with Nate here? And if you did extra help, you know, our doors are always open for people who are willing to put in the work, willing to commit to the process. You can click the link down below. You can apply for the Recovery Jumpstart program, or you could check out Recovery Academy. But always remember that you are a thriver and you are just one mind shift away from living life with thriving health. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much, Nate.